Hello, hello. How many blooming experts do we have in the room who may be eager just to learn a few tips and tricks to make it go smoother and faster for you behind the chair? That's you, raise your hand. Yes. Now, how many of you work behind the chair, comfortable with blondes, but every now and then there's a challenge that comes up and you think, if I just knew how they made it ha do this in the picture, or if I just had the right product to make that happen, if that's you, raise your hand. I think sometimes we, we're both, we can answer both questions. Sometimes we can be that blonding rock star, and then other times we have someone in our chair that can be a bit of a challenge, and with the right knowledge and the right products, we can turn that challenge into a rock star moment. Would you agree? Yes. Now, I really want to say thanks to you guys before we get started, because I know you've come in on your day off to learn, and I want to make sure that you take away what you came for and leave here with a little more knowledge and a higher step towards success than before you came. Sound good? Great. Now, while we're here, we're going to be learning techniques, and we're also going to learn about some new products and formulas for some beautiful, beautiful new tones. Have you guys been seeing a lot of the pretty tones added in social media lately that have kind of shifted and, and changed the way we look at things and the way we have consultations with our clients or salon guests? I have. You know, we have, I see those pictures every day. I work in the salon just like you guys do full time and I teach on my days off because I love the education aspect of the beauty industry. However, I see those same pictures that you see. I Sometimes I'm lucky enough to be able to create those same pictures and post them on my social media, but it all comes from knowledge and technique and product every time. One thing we're gonna be learning is the technique I used on this beautiful mannequin called contoured shadow lighting. You can see that she has beautiful lighting. Let me bring her closer to the camera. She has beautiful lighting, but she also has contour and depth. So I'm going to talk about how this color was created. I'm gonna teach you the technique. And honestly, you guys, this long thick hair was done in under 45 minutes. Can you imagine that? I'm gonna teach you how to do it. We at Matrix have a learning mantra that I personally love and stand by, and I think that you will feel the same. Our mantra is think, believe, dream, and dare. Can we say that together? Let's read it from the poster. Think, think outside the box. Believe in your dreams. Dream and dare to take risk. It's wonderful, you guys. Would you say that you have to be willing to take a risk? You have to be able to step out of your box and then take a risk in order to grow. How many of you are willing to go there with me today? Thank you, yes. So some of the techniques we are going to do, you may have done before and you may be comfortable with, but it may be something new. It may be something that gives you a little bit of a challenge. So let's take that risk together. Let's learn these techniques and let's send the most beautiful blondes out of our salons so that other people are asking, where did you get that hair done? They all want to know. So are you with me on that? Great, let's go. Arnie Miller was a hairstylist who in the early 80s started this company with a dream to provide products and a place for all hairstylists to belong, for everyone to feel included. And we carry through with that same dream today. We are here for all humans, all hair types, and we are definitely diversity matrix. In speaking of diversity, where does that play a part in your color application, in your color results? Think 
about that. Let's talk about why our colors should be for all hair types and all humans. Let's talk about all levels. How about from this dark to this light? Would you agree we've seen all these levels in the salon? Yes, and have we seen some people who have hair this dark that want to be this light? Would you say that could be a challenge? Sometimes, but we're going to talk about that today and we're going to talk about ways to meet that challenge. How about all underlying pigments? What part would you say the underlying pigment plays in your blonding process? Can someone answer that? Yes, yes. The underlying pigment determines how much warmth is left in your end result. So we have to consider that in our formulas before we ever apply that color to the hair. Now, how about all diameters? Would you say that fine, medium, or coarse plays a part in the result of your colors? Any colors, your regular colors or your blondes? Definitely. So we'll talk about how to work with each of those diameters to get the best results. How about all patterns? Straight, wavy, curly, and coily. Would you say that matters in your color application and your formula at times? Definitely. Because we know that really curly hair sometimes needs a little more saturation than other colors. I mean, other hair types. And we also know that it can be a little more porous. So those are things, well, porosity, that's a, something else to talk about. How much, what part does porosity play in your color? Oh, oh, exactly. Yes, you're right. Porosity is a big factor in how we formulate, how we apply the color and how long we leave it. Right, yes. Now you all should have this book if you don't, reach out to your sales consultant about how to get it. This is your swatch book that has all the color sync colors and toners. And in the front of the book, you will see the chart that we just discussed with each of those the factors, the levels, the underlying pigment, all diameters, and all patterns. So take the time, just when you have extra time, not just when you're trying to pull out a swatch real quick to match a color, but take the time to read through this book because there's a lot of information, especially in the back, that can really benefit you on your formulations and give you better results. So let me set that down. Now, let's talk about the Matrix Lightener portfolio. Have you seen how many lighteners Matrix provides? Yes. Let's talk about each one. Can someone read the first one for me? Yes, Lightmaster. How many of you have used Lightmaster? It's our go-to lightener for eight levels lift. And in the recent couple of years, we've also come out with Lightmaster that's pre-bonded and it will give you eight levels of lift as well. The next one we'll talk about is High Riser. And that's what we'll be using for this demonstration today. How many of you have used High Riser? It will take you nine levels lighter and it is pre-bonded as well. What about the open air? How many of you are using open air lightener for your balayage, hand painting techniques that need to process in open air? That's a beautiful lightener and it will, it's also pre-bonded and it will lift up to seven levels lighter. Then we have lift and tone. That's our tried and true lightener. It's been around for a long time and it's still here because it's so good. People have been using it for years and it lifts and tones at the same time and it will give you up to six levels lift. Now, how about curl lights? Has anyone in the room used curl lights? Yes. Curl Lights is a conditioning lightener made specifically for curly hair. Now, it can be used on any hair type, it was, but it was des designed 
for curly hair to add extra conditioning. It has beeswax that helps hold the moisture. Now, can anybody tell me what happens a lot of times to curly hair when you lighten it? Yes, sometimes the natural curl can be relaxed or sometimes it can start to lose a little of its curl pattern. So Curl Lights was made to maintain that curl pattern. I'm going to show you a beautiful example of how that works. Ooh, got behind the mannequin, sorry guys. So this girl was done with curl lights. Can you see, I'm, I'm taking her closer to the camera or under the light so you can see. She has beautiful, beautiful curly highlights. And what I, I want you to see two things. First, I want you to see the integrity of the curl. Do you see? That curl pattern is still there, just as beautiful it was as it was before. Now, curl lights will take you up to five levels lighter. So she went about five levels lighter. She went to a level seven, and then I toned her with our new tonal control that I'll show you in a few minutes. And the one that I used was seven in A, because she's the level, she was, her lightning went to a seven, and then the in A neutralizes some of the warmth. So that was why I chose that color. And again, guys, I think it's beautiful, and I hope you do too. Let me put her back. So now that we've discussed the lightning portfolio, does anyone have questions about those lighteners before we move forward? Great. Let's talk about Color Sync and Tonal Control. Color Sync is a beautiful toning system that has an alkaline base. Tonal Control is our newer toning system that is an acid base. Tonal Control is a sheer gel toner. It, it has predictable results from a gel cream that can be applied with a bottle or with a brush, whichever you prefer. Some people do prefer the bottle because of the gel consistency. And it's color coded in the packaging, let me show you, with the dominant tone being the color of the package. For instance, we have a purple package to represent violet, a neutral package to represent our neutral tones, green, or jade, isn't that beautiful? I don't know if I can hold them all, let's see. There's a yellow package for our warmer tones and a pink package for our rose tones. It's a beautiful, beautiful color line. This mannequin was lightened with Lightmaster and 20 volume. The ends were toned with 10 PR in tonal control, and the shadow root area was done with 5 NW. So you have a level 5 that melts into a level 10. I think she's beautiful. Love that color. And love the fact that it didn't take long. The lightning took about 45 minutes to apply. And it processed another probably 45 minutes rinse that, apply the toner, and that lasted, that took 20 minutes, rinsed and dried, and here she is. Are we ready to move into technique? Great, let's get started. As you can see, I separated the sides from the back. I left it parted in the middle so that each side could be separated. You could twist those into chignons or you can leave those uh, hanging as long as they're pushed forward and not in the way of what you're doing in the back. And here we're going to start at the base with horizontal partings that will go all the way up. So our first section is going to be about an inch to an inch and a half deep, depending on the thickness of the hair. Her hair is not very thick, so it didn't, didn't take a really small section, but it's not super large either. If her hair were thicker, I would need a much smaller section. If her hair were thinner, I could get away with taking uh, a deeper section. Now I also see exactly where the texture lays in her hair. Right here you can see that there's some movement going on. 
So right in that area, it's just below halfway down, I'm gonna take my comb, and as you can see, it's a comb with alternating teeth so that it's great for back combing. I'm going to lay that comb in the hair with tension. I'm gonna hold with my lower hand uh, pretty tightly. I'm take that comb, lay it into the hair, and push straight up to the scalp. And you see how neat that stayed? There are a few little ones laying on top that need to be pushed up. So I'm gonna go one more time about part, this far down, maybe like almost halfway down. Push that up again, and now I'm gonna hold that with tension at the scalp. I'm going to take a clip, clip that hair in place, and now this cut hair that's left remaining is going to receive Lautner. Now, what's important to know about the way I backcombed that and held it in place is there were only two neat pushes up. So that way, when I get ready to take that down, it's not going to tangle and I'm gonna be able to brush that out easily after shampooing and conditioning the color. So to begin, now I'm going to take my foil, lay it under that hair, and because I have all this hair above that's going to be coming down over it, I don't have to worry about creating a harsh line. That I'm going to get blend as soon as this natural hair is brought back down into it. So I'm going to hold the foil in place. I'm going to paint my lightener. Once again, it's high riser and I mixed a uh, one to two ratio, one part lightener to two parts developer. I'm gonna start about this far up and paint all the way down. When I said this far, it's probably about two and a half to three inches off the scalp. So I'm gonna start about two and a half to three inches off the scalp Paint all the way down. Make sure that hair is very well saturated, especially on those ends. And now I'm going to lay another foil. Well, I'm gonna slide that down first. See, so because this hair is gonna get us the shadow treatment and I don't want the foil in the way. So I'm gonna take that foil kind of slide it down right to where I started that application. Then I'm going to lay another foil on top, press that together. And now, because I do have a good bit of hair in there, I'm going to lift the underneath foil just to check my saturation. And as you can see, let me pull, I'm just gonna peel it back. As you can see, underneath did not get the saturation it needed. So I'm going back in and I'm painting over that. Check from both sides. Okay. Beautiful. I'll turn it back around so you can see. Now it's fully saturated. I'll lay that foil right back under it. And now I know on my next one to saturate a little better or a lot better. I'm gonna fold these sides down to keep that neat and in place. Now let's do that one. Now we can release the clip. And then we'll do that one more time on the next section. I'm taking my comb. I'm starting just below where I see texture. I'm placing my comb through the thickness of the hair, push all the way up to the scalp with tension. And as you can see, it's still neat and in place. And there are a few hairs left. I'm gonna go one more time. I'm laying my comb in, this time about a third of the way down. Push all the way up. I'm holding that with tension. Pull my comb out, but hold it with my fingers. Taking my clip, clip that in place. 
I'm placing my foil under it. And this time I'm gonna spread that hair out a little and make sure that I saturate it well. Starting here. Now, if I were using a balayage board, I would have a little more control. How many of you are balayage board users out there? I am too, ordinarily. I didn't lay it here in this moment, so I'm going without it, but we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna take my brush and just kinda push that around a little and make sure that it's fully saturated. Yes, just like that. I'm gonna apply a lightener one more time to it. And once again, that line is not going to be there. Once that hair from the back combing is brought down, you're gonna see a beautiful blend. Now I'm gonna take a second foil, lay over the top, well, and fold the sides in. Now another way to get that, remember earlier when I slid it down before I laid the one on top? I can lay the one on top and then just slide down a little so that I see right where that lightener starts because we're about to go in now and apply our toner to all of the area near the scalp out to where we meet that blonde. Now, we will continue and with horizontal partings all the way until this section's done. Then we will start in the front with uh, vertical sections if you choose, or you could go horizontal and then maybe do a few baby lights around that face. But for now, I wanna show you in fast motion, since we're not completing this head for this demonstration, I wanna show you what the next step would be once the entire head is foiled. Now, I've pre-mixed Tonal Control 5 NGA in a bottle. I'm going to take that toner and apply it directly to that hair that's above the foil packet. Make sure it's fully saturated. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm not going to overlap the toner with the lightener. I'm just letting it kind of meet. So I'm going to do one more and then you'll see the application a little better. So I'm gonna take this, squirt it right into that teased foundation. And I'm gonna take my fingers and manipulate that. And now it's ready to process. When it's finished, It'll all come down at the same time. We'll rinse and shampoo, and then we'll style or, or tone the ends. It's up to you if the ends need to be toned. Sometimes they don't. Honestly, this mannequin was beautiful before I even added the toner. I just wanted to add a little extra warmth. So let me set her aside to process. And let me show you this beautiful result one more time using the same colors and same lightener that we just did for that application and show you how it's going to end up. So are there any questions before we move forward? Yes, the ratio once again on the lightener was one part lightener to two parts developer and the ratio on the tonal control was one part tonal control to one part 10 volume. Thank you for that question. Now, if we have no more questions, we'll move forward. Is everybody good? Great. So thank you again for being here. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Matrix at any time. You'll find our number in uh, on all of our packaging. And if you have uh, sales questions, ask your sales consultants. That's what they're there for. They'll help you with uh, special deals. They'll help you with a new product that are coming on the market. Just feel free to always ask because you know what? You're always welcome. So thank you again. And I can't wait for you to show us some of the work you're doing with these beautiful new toners.